Sometime in the mid-90s, a lot of video game companies were having trouble making the big step from Part 2 to Part 3, especially when it came to fighting games. Now, for the most part, Part 2 grabbed what everyone was cool about Part 1 and just improved it drastically with new gameplay elements and beloved new characters, a whole bunch of good stuff. But when they made Part 3, that's when they decided to do everything different and spice it up, make it a whole new game. And sometimes the weird differences in gameplay and the missing beloved characters who face for other ones that aren't that, that special, it made the people either not adapt or not really like the third sequel that much. Even Street Fighter 3 wasn't received that well when it first came out. Now, of course, nowadays everyone loves the Street Fighter 3 cast, but remember, back then the first version only had Ryu and Ken and a whole bunch of other weird, at the time, unknown and uncared for characters. I mean, in fact, originally Ryu and Ken were not even supposed to be in the game. The main character was supposed to be Alex. So anyway, today we're going to talk about two fighting games that had bizarre and weird third sequels. We're going to talk about Fatal Fury 3 and Art of Fighting 3. Mark Rodriguez and Paige and you're watching the video game masters and today we're going to talk about Art of Fighting 3 and Fatal Fury 3 now, I thought no we were those... Tomb Raider you told me this episode's Tomb Raider well yeah but the thing is we didn't finish editing the last little footage and everything and this has been long overdue you know I had to but you know... I'm so tired of fighting games yeah I know these are classic Neo Geo fighting games and it's so awesome but to... who knows what Neo Geo is anymore um yeah right here the script tells me what the Neo Geo is. That's all like how I would know. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, this has been long overdue. I started this last year. Okay, and it's stop with your excuses and not making me want uh, to do this episode even more. So, I'm leaving. I'm doing my own stuff. I can work on my Nancy Drew playthroughs and my Minecraft Let's Play. Be jealous. So I am gonna disappear, so go check out my channel, News Page Mission, plug, plug, plug. See ya. How did she... Uh, whatever, I guess. I guess I gotta do this by myself, guys. And, um... Well, I don't know. I mean, who, who do I... I wanna do this episode by myself. And, I mean, Johnny hasn't played the games long enough to remember them. Um, Rock Yamas is busy, Sweet Pete's busy, Pika Chica, I mean, Gurg's Dolly's away on some mission. I, I don't, I don't want to do this by myself. I mean, guys, is anyone out there who wants to review this game with me? Hi, I'm Mark. You know you can always count on me when it comes to mini reviews about SNK games. Oh, hey, Victim16. I haven't heard from you in a while. I mean, it was good of you to come out on our holiday special, and yeah, sure, why not? Let's do these games together. Oh, come on, Mark. Victim 16 is, like, so 2010. I'm Rebel Ducky now. Give it the times, dude. Oh, um, okay, you're called Robo Ducky now? Um, yeah, sure, sure, whatever works, whatever works. Anyways, guys, let's continue. As I said before, we're, now we're going to start talking about Art of Fighting 3 and Video Fury 3. So let's begin with Art of Fighting 3, since we already did Art of Fighting 1 and 2 last year. Yes, I know, long overdue. Let's get to it. <laughs> Round one. Fight! Art of Fighting 3 The Path of the Warrior was released in 1996 for the Neo Geo, featuring all new graphics and gameplay. The only classic characters coming back are Ryo Sakasaki and Robert Garcia, alongside a cast of 8 all new characters. In fact, Yuri is only a background character in this game, following Ryo around during his story. What? Oh, come on, they turned Yuri into some background character now? This time, the story follows Robert Garcia as he goes to help his childhood friend Freya in Grass Hill, Mexico, and Ryo and Yuri follow him. The other characters in the game are Kasumi Toto, the daughter of Ryo Hako Toto, the tonfo-twirling Rody Burks, the whip-wielding Lenny Creston, Carmen Cole, a family friend of Robert, Wang Kolsan, the wandering artist, and Jin Fuha, a warrior out to get revenge on Eiji Kisaragi that isn't even in the game. 
the gameplay has a new combo system that is similar to the button tap style of Tekken and other 3D games at the time. This includes juggling the opponents in midair and being able to land an extra hit when they're down on the ground. This makes the action flow a lot faster and smoother in the previous games without the strange things like getting dizzy over a jump kick or something. The characters can still use the spirit bar to use their special moves and if it gets too low the special moves get weaker. You can charge up the spirit bar or you can taunt to weaken the opponent's spirit bar. There are no bonus stages in this game so Ryo and Robert can use their Osho Kokens right off the bat. The graphics still zoom in and out, depending on how close the characters are to each other, but you no longer have bruises or scars as they fight. When the character is flashing red due to a low life bar and their spirit bar is full, they can still use their desperation moves. If they win the match with a desperation move, the fight ends in the ultimate KO, making that person the winner of the entire fight even if it's just the first round. During the game he fights Sinclair, the sword spinning mid boss. The final boss is Wilder, and he was after Freya for a formula that makes him incredibly powerful and was originally created by both his father and Freya's father. You gotta take him down to beat the game. Art of Fighting 3 is a pretty cool game, and unlike the first two games for the Art of Fighting Anthology and the PS2, this one has a lot better and smoother control. The gameplay is pretty fun, but sadly apart from Kasumi and maybe Carmen Cole, everybody else is pretty lame and forgettable of the new characters. I would at least like to have seen Jin Buha come out in one of the King of Fighter games so he could finally get revenge on Eiji Kisaragi. I also would like to have seen some of the classic characters like Yuri and King return with the new graphics and gameplay that this game offers. The stages are cool, especially with the whole Mexican vibe, because hey, you gotta love Mexico, and I have to say it was pretty bold to take the storyline out of Southtown and into Mexico, and I guess it does explain why some of the characters didn't come back, because there's no real reason for Mickey and John Crawley to follow the cast into Mexico, and while the music's pretty cool and catchy, it is kind of forgettable as well in the long run. And now starting off with the Art of Fighting 3. I'd like to go and give some extra credit to my favorite character, Sinclair, though they don't really add her much anymore. At least they've been adding some Robert to the newer games from what I have been noticing. With the usual upgrades that always come with fighting game sequels, I'd like to go and give some extra credit for the fact that this game, like, even to this day, has one of the most smoothest 2D animation ever. I do actually go and give these guys the extra credit for the fact that they actually took their time on making the graphics and the fighting and everything just so smooth and just just really roll with it. With the final boss, it personally felt like he should have just been his own playable character that was meant for the roster versus him actually be the final boss and then just try to find a way to link his story with everyone else's story. I guess the reason why I was so bugged by it, besides the mini fact that he does remind me of Hugo from Street Fighter, was the fact that he had no purpose to be in the story, and they tried too hard to make him fit in the story. Okay guys, so now that we're done with Art of Fighting 3, let's continue with Fatal Fury 3, The Road to the Final Victory! Go! Fatal Fury 3 Road to the Final Victory was released in 1995 for the Neo Geo, also with all new graphics and gameplay. We have more familiar faces this time, as we have the Lone Wolves, Terry, Andy and Joe, Mai Shirinui, and the official return of Geese Howard. The game's story involves the return of Geese Howard, as well as other evil characters, as they all try to find magical scrolls that will grant immortality to the user. Of course, the Bogars and their friends want to stop this from happening. The other characters include Blue Mary, an agent with grappling moves, Franco Bash, a powerhouse kickboxer, Han Fu, a police officer with nunchucks, Sokaku Mochizuki, a sworn enemy of the Shirinui clan, and Bob Wilson, a capoeira fighter that works in Richard Meyer's Pow Pow Cafe too. Yeah, kinda sucks that Yuri's not a playable character anymore, but hey, at least you're still Bob! What kinda name is Bob for a Brazilian dude anyways? The most noticeable gameplay change is that now the characters can shift to the background and the foreground instead of just jumping in and out of the background. When they're in a different fighting plane, they can hit you with an oversway attack. You can also strike back with an anti-oversway attack to knock the opponent back into your fighting plane. The gameplay is faster and there are more combos with the basic attacks. Like previous Fatal Fury games, you have two punches and two kicks. When your life bar is flashing red, you can still pull off the desperation moves, though you can also confuse your opponent doing a fake out. There's also extra animations depending on how you defeat the opponent, either by smacking them towards the TV screen or tossing them against something in the background. 
Whoa, did she just say what I think she said? She can't really be saying that. Whoa, okay then. I guess Blue Mary actually does say fuck you after she kicks your ass. Okay, so my all cute and bouncy, but Blue Mary, she's hardcore. The game starts similar to the first Fatal Fury, allowing you to choose your first opponent from four fighters. This time the fighters you choose from are Bob Wilson, Blue Mary, Franco Bash, and Joe Higashi. Then you face Ryuji Yamasaki, the crazy escaped murderer. It is a one round match and he doesn't use any special moves. After you defeat him, you face Mai, Andy, Hanfu, Sokaku, Terry, and Geese Howard. But the game doesn't end there as Geese gets away after the battle. Now you face Yamasaki for a rematch, this time for a normal 2 out of 3 fight and he's using all his special moves on you. The game also rates your fights with grades like A or B or S and so forth, and if you have a good enough grade, you face either Chin Chonsu or Chin Chonrei or both after you defeat Yamasaki. These guys are possessed by the spirits that created the scrolls 2000 years ago and now they want to use them to unleash their power, defeat the Chin brothers to defeat the game. And yes, I did say Chin brothers because Chonsu is a guy. Fatal Fury 3 was a cool game when it first came out, and compared to Art of Fighting 3 and even Street Fighter 3, at least we had 5 familiar faces this time, and they officially brought back East Howard. The new characters were kinda interesting, my favorites being Bob Wilson and Han Fu, but he still had ways to go before he became more powerful in the sequels. But man, is this game tough! Some of the normal fighters like Mai Shiri Nui and Han Fu are downright annoying to fight against and you better get used to that plane shifting stuff really quickly since the computer opponents spam it any chance they get, especially when they're about to lose. By the time you get to the bosses, they're sipping back and forth so fast, you think you're fighting Z fighters and the annoyance goes up to over 9000. Still, the game is a lot of fun and easier for the average gamer to get into when compared to the earlier Fatal Fury games. Fatal Fury 3. New characters, better graphics, the usual things that come with sequels when it comes to fighting games. But what makes this one a little bit special? Sadly, not really so much, but I will definitely go and give credit to where credit is due. Starting off, giving this game a little bit of extra credit for the fact that it does have three bosses depending on who you play as, including the infamous Geese Howard. Everyone, applause, applause. Though the story was pretty... uh... generic for a typical fighting game, I do go and give them extra credit for the fact that they did clean up on their button controls, and adding the extra combos are always great in fighting games. Both games came out for the Neo Geo back in the day, but nowadays you could probably still find a copy of Fatal Fury Battle Archives Volume 1 to play Fatal Fury 3, and Art of Fighting Anthology to play Art of Fighting 3, both available for the PS2. As you know, the characters from Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting would continue to appear in the King of Fighter games long after their series ended. The new voices for the Lone Wolves in Fatal Fury would appear in King of Fighters 95 and onwards. In fact, the same guy who does Joey Gashi in Fatal Fury 3 and onwards, Nobuyuki Hiyama, would even voice Joe in the Japanese version of the Fatal Fury 2 anime and Fatal Fury the motion picture. Blue Mary and Yamasaki would appear in King of Fires 97 and onwards, and the only character from Art of Fighting 3 to come back in other games is Kasumi Toto appearing in King of Fires 96 and onwards, as well as SNK vs Capcom Chaos. Well that's the end of this episode of Video Game Masters, and as you know that's the end of the Art of Fighting games, you only made 3 games, but we still got some more Fatal Fury games to go. We still got Real Bob Fatal Fury, Real Bob 2, Real Bob Special, and we also got Mark of the Wolves, and of course we're going to talk about all of them throughout the year. Hopefully it won't take as long as I've done before in the other years, but we're going to get back to them until we review the rest of the whole Fatal Fury anthology, if you want to call it. Anyways, guys, uh, that's it for this particular episode, and um, hey, it was nice seeing you again, Robo Ducky. And as I said before, keeping it short, sweet, and simple, leaving the reviews for the reviewers, I'd like to go and say thank you guys for having me on your show, and also, goodbye, people. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show, Victim 6 uh, Robo Ducky, whatever works for you. Um, and yeah, it'll be good to have you back on the show. And of course, if you guys think you're awesome enough to take on Robo Ducky and Xbox Live, yeah, you can bring it. She's pretty good at those fighting games. And one thing I want to say, guys, of course, is don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, not just to this channel, but also to Paige's channel, Miss Page Mischief, where she also talks about um, Let's Plays with Nancy Drew, with Minecraft, Loot Crate unboxings, and a whole bunch of other extra random things. She's to watch the channel to find out. It's a pretty cool channel. Anyways, guys, this is Mark Rodriguez, I guess, solo, and um, see you all later, and catch you next episode.